Welcome to this session uh, called Caste and Class in India Today. My name is Mayura and I'll be chairing the session. Greenleft is the host of this conference and if you're motivated to become a socialist activist, you can either join us or stay in touch. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting today. Um, for us, that's the Wurundjeri and Boomwarang people of the Kulin Nations. Um, so, India's caste system was officially outlawed in 1950, yet it continues to impact social relations in India today. The early workers' movements in India assumed that, with the spread of capitalism, the caste system would fade away. Instead, the opposite has happened. Indian capitalism has reinforced caste to solidify class divisions and divisions within the working class itself. This workshop will explore the intersections between caste and class in India today drawing on the experiences of, of winning greater rights and union representations for our Dalits who remain at the bottom of the caste system. Our speaker for today um, is Clifton Di Rosario, and he's a member of the Communist Party Marxist-Leninist Liberation. He's a fierce campaigner for Dalits' rights in the, in the state of Karnataka. Um, so with that, i give it to Clifton. Thanks, Clifton. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. I mean, I was just telling our friends here, if I had the option, I too would have been in solidarity hall listening to Lydia and what she has to say. So I really appreciate all of you making it here. Uh, just a disclaimer at the beginning, I don't, uh, I mean, I'll explain about the caste system. It's a very, it's a hierarchical social organization that, that exists in India. In that sense, it's probably unique uh, just to the, to the Hindu society in India and which is now, you see it in other communities in India as well. I don't belong to uh, that section of society. I'm not from that community. But um, through our work uh, in the party, uh, much of our comrades, many of our uh, leaders and comrades come from that, uh, come from the Dalit community, from the scheduled caste community. And so I'll be drawing on those experiences when I talk about it. Not for a moment am I trying to uh, be a representative in that sense. Where somewhere it said, you know, Dalit activist. I, I'm, I, I can't be a Dalit activist. I'm always you know, against those structures of oppression, and that's where I stand. Uh, I, I don't know how much people know about the caste system, so I'll just, you know, try and explain it to the, uh, to the, so that people can just kind of, you know, understand it. Because sometimes I realize that when you talk to someone about caste, somebody from, uh, at least from the global north and the north and the south, which I think is what <laughs> Australia is, it, there's a little bit of difficulty in understanding it. Now, um, in fact, Sam was, you know, I was having a chat with Sam and uh, how do you explain to a person from a white background, you know, what caste is? Probably one way would be, you know, to understand, like for me to come to your country, you literally have to jump through loopholes. There's a lot of scrutiny, you know, visa, visa is not easy to get, it's extremely expensive, you come here also, there's going to be a lot of drilling, a lot of questions that happen. But for you, I think it's just a walk-in in most parts, you know, so that privilege, I think if you can understand, then it becomes easier to understand, you know, what caste is all about. So, I mean, there are various theories to the entire origin of caste. I'm not getting into that. That's quite a, you know, uh, that's a quite a vast area. But uh, what I would say is that if you look at Hindu society in India, it's structured according to this caste system. It's something uh, that you're born into. So basically there are four uh, there are four dominant castes in that sense. The Brahmins, who are the religious intellectual class, as it were. Uh, the Kshatriyas, who are the uh, the warrior class. Then the Vaishyas, or the trading class. And then you have the Shudras, which is the working class. And outside of that system, you have an entire section of society who do not even fit into that. Who we call the Panchamas, who today are the, what you call, uh, the scheduled caste, the Dalits. Now, this system is something that has been in existence for, for, for more than 2,000 years uh, in, in, in India. And um, it has, see, there's a very difference. A lot of people try to compare uh, the caste system with race, you know, as to, so for instance, I would imagine even in uh, indigenous communities in Australia, the kind of discrimination they face, the kind of difference that is there, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, in terms of, uh, just in interactions, how one person, how you kind of talk to them, how you associate with them. But this is very different. This is, caste system is, firstly, it's by birth. So by birth, you are in a caste, you're, you're always going to be there. There's no chance of you 
coming out of it the second thing is that it is it is it, it has religious sanction so it is mandated by in the scriptures as it were that this system has to be there and you're born in that community in that caste and that's where uh, you you'll always be and the way that entire system is is maintained is uh, you would have heard of uh, baba saheb ambedkar dr b r ambedkar you know, he's one of the probably one of the greatest uh, not just an anti caste but a democrat somebody who had a revolutionary vision for for india who came from this community and you know uh, i mean much of why uh, much of the reason uh, why dalits in india today are able to you know are articulate they've actually been able to come out of the situation that they're in in a long way you know in a large way it, you have to you know the contribution goes to his of uh, baba saheb ambedkar so he actually examines the sentai system he's written about this extensively and is a fantastic reader you know writer you should read him and he he comes to this conclusion that endogamy is the is one way where you've ensured that caste perpetrates itself so endogamy basically means that you'll marry within your own caste uh, again see these are all very difficult uh, you know i don't know how easy it is to understand but basically if i'm born say in a in a brahmin family i will marry a brahmin that's literally the the law that's the rule there may be some kind of transgressions here and there there'll be one or two people who probably go to but largely speaking that's the kind of norm that you follow so that's how it kind of you know perpetuates itself from uh, from uh, generation to generation and it's again you know, like i said it's caste is ascribed at birth so the moment you're born your your caste is determined at that point itself the house that you're born in there's just no thing that i mean i'm going to choose this caste or you know it's like you can say that you want to convert to some other religion you can't say i'm going to convert now to some other caste that that possibility just you know uh, doesn't exist i'm simplifying this a bit there are lot there are many more sociological kind of uh, you know kind of nuances that are there in that i'm not going to get into that so but you know uh, just just to show that that's there the other thing that's very curious about this entire system and uh, ambedkar actually you know the way his understanding was that this is uh, the the general theory was that this is a division of labor so intellectual work will be done by this this caste the warrior class will do this the trading class will do this so he says see this is this is not the way to understand this is not a division of labor that is taking place it's a division of laborers that is taking place so if you are if you are say somebody who is uh, 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 if uh, if you are born in a dalit community then inevitably the jobs that are assigned to you would be manual work you know cleaning uh, garbage collection either in the villages or in this even when you migrate to the cities literally you migrate with the kind of employment that you have so the mobility in that sense is something that's very difficult uh, is very uh, is just very very difficult in that sense so these occupations also so as much as your 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 uh, caste is ascribed at birth your occupation is also ascribed at birth and it is only if you were to really make a massive massive attempt to get out of that that you'll have an option other than that now the other thing about caste which which you know uh, which is very it's really difficult to digest is the manner in which it regulates your life Like I said in the morning, you know, it, it you're basically your your every day is regulated from the morning to the night, from birth to death, from what you eat to what you wear to where you live to who you can associate with. Every single thing is is uh, is moderated by you know is regulated by this. So uh, some of the things that we've been doing, for instance, you know, this will probably help you. Is um, I'm from a state called Karnataka. It's in in south in the south of India and. the caste system is is very vicious over there perhaps not as vicious as it is in the northern part of india but it still is very vicious so the community is uh, you know some of the work that we do is uh, we um, uh, landless laborers peasants uh, we we have unions of those and over there the, you know it's it's just incredible so you go to a village and so the the, entire, the village is as it is and you'll have people the houses are as per your caste so the dominant caste people who not, are not necessarily brahmin they now could be you know somebody from the middle caste but who have got land become a econo- you know economic power political power is in their hand so their houses will be in one part another sub caste their houses will be in some part but the dalits their houses will has to be on another side there's no way you know that you can 
go there so we we you know we had to fight uh, battles where um, uh, for instance um, there's a barber shop in the village so you can't go to the barber shop because you, you're an untouchable you know, the, the notion of purity and impurity also is, you know is connected to this so if if a dalit touches a uh, uh, non dalit a uh, upper caste person the upper caste person gets polluted apparently so for that reason you have these these practices of untouchability which are it's just in inhuman incredibly incredibly inhuman and degrading when i say it's degrading i don't think it, of course it's dehumanizing you know there's no question about it but it's dehumanizing everyone it's dehumanizing the person who's who actually believes that i mean if you are living your entire life with the belief that you know if i touch you i'm going to get polluted the level of dehumanization that's happened to me i think is, is something that you know the, that you you just can't escape that so we for instance you know we have had to fight these battles literally these are like huge fights you'll have to have in a village just to ensure that you can go to the um barber shop and get your hair cut you have something called the double tumbler system so you have a chai shop uh, your um, tea shop in the in the village the person from the from the untouchable the dalit community won't be allowed into it that's the first step. the second thing would be that if tea is being served over there it would be served in two glasses so one for the dominant caste and one for you so you create you know fight about it so then what they do is they'll say okay fine we are not going to have two gla- two glasses we're going to have plastic glasses so everyone drink and throw it away so the this there should be absolutely no touch you can't enter temples uh, there's something that we have in south india you know this the urkatte mm. uh, that's basically the center of the village you have a huge tree and a kind of a place where everyone just generally sits you know male of course you can sit oh, to, yeah so you're not allowed into that place so caste has all of these practices around it you know it's just, uh, deeply deeply dehumanizing and any kind of a infraction of this it's visited with serious kind of violence and this is something that you see all the time uh, one of the villages you know where we we have a very strong uh, movement of uh, landless laborers in north karnataka there was this uh, boy who who and who fell in love with this girl from the middle caste and i think they were in a relationship for 2 years or so and finally the girl's family comes to know they call him to his house they beat him up through the night and hang him to death mm-hmm. so he's killed this the only reason he's killed is because he's from a from the so called lower caste and he had the you know audacity to get into a relationship with somebody who's from a middle caste and so he's killed and of course i mean the kind of the kind of struggles you have to do you have to undertake then to ensure that a criminal case gets registered then to ensure that the the accused are actually arrested or at least you know put to trial to ensure that the 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 investigation is done objectively and then to ensure that the trial actually takes place within you know some amount of time i mean as a lawyer i can tell you you know i'm i'm fighting cases in the high court arguing cases in the high court where very big dalit atrocities we call them dalit atrocities atrocities on the dalit community things like this take place inevitably you know the the police the administration everyone's on on the side of the of the dominant caste so you have acquittals and then you'll sit in the high court and try and ensure through appeals that you know you get some come some kind of justice for them which is very very different so this this entire you know regulation of life of private life and public life day to dawn birth to death that's part and parcel of the of the caste system and inevitably then so the if you were to then look at who what is the social status what is the economic status you know where does this you know this community fit in and you ob- they are obviously the most oppressed socially and economically in in society now when, you know before i go just uh, one more thing i want to tell just to give a sense of numbers uh the population of our country i think is 1.4 billion now and dalits will constitute 16% yes that i think maybe what how many times maybe some 10 times the population of of australia yeah. <laughs> that's the number of people who have to live this who are forced to live in this kind of a situation every day but while i say this there's also there's a long tradition of anti caste social justice movements that our country has seen and again that's a that's a long kind of thing but there are few people i think you know few of them who we have to think in my state for instance in the 12th century 
he had this person called Baswanna, who basically was an anti-caste movement, saying that you know we have to move out of this. So anyone from any any caste, you can come and you you join my me, and you know we'll have this kind of a casteless kind of a commune, community kind of thing. Of course, you know you, there was a lot of uh, uh, repression. He was killed, and that most unfortunately, that entire movement resulted in a community now which identifies as a middle caste. which is also casteist and now is exploiting and you know discriminating against the dalits but you also before that if you look at buddhism buddhism in india also you know was in that sense you know a cry against a fight against uh, against uh, the caste system so you have you in the 1800s you have somebody like jyoti ba phule and uh, uh, savitri ba phule husband and wife who come from a from a shudra community who fought for education to be given to Uh, to dalits and uh, shudra uh, shudras and also to women because at that time education was also denied so you had this lo- long history of struggle you know and that's that history of struggle is something that one always carries so it's, there's of course the the oppression but there's alongside that there is also the kind of uh, resistance uh, that is uh, taking place so given this kind of system the kind of crimes that you're looking at is unfathomable i just have some figures In two thousand and twenty-one, there were fifty thousand nine hundred crimes against Dalits. That would be rapes, murders, attempt to murders, grabbing their property, beating them, abusing them, casteist abuse, etc., etc. Fifty thousand cases in one year, and that is just rising every as we you know it's rising every year. And in fact, what uh, some of us you know are, are seeing is that as fascism is unfolds in india this casteist aggression this strengthening of caste you know strengthening of caste oppression is becoming more and more pronounced and that's you know something that we ought not to keep you know lose a uh, focus of so the other thing i was saying is that obviously if this is the social structure then it, it's obvious that you know political power and, and economic power also escapes the community which means that you know even till today it's been very difficult for the community for the entire community at least to come out of that kind of a uh, that kind of an oppression and as as a person from a communist party you know uh, who's very entrenched in this politics i must say that you know the left the communists made a very big mistake uh, in india uh, when the communist party came into india somewhere around the 1920s and at that time this is very economist kind of an approach you know class as pure ec- economic kind of category so somehow you know the 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 communists at that time they missed this peculiarity of caste in india they were of the belief like my friend said that class consciousness class struggle and you know will automatically mean that this kind of a caste consciousness will it will trump over the caste consciousness but that definitely was not the case and there were enough number of uh, you know experiences at that point in time even as the communist movement was growing to show that you know see this approach of yours is is not accurate you need to do some kind of course correction and uh, baba saheb ambedkar actually raised a lot of those questions but unfortunately the communist movement at that time they made a mistake they really didn't you know uh, they, they, they weren't able to completely gra- you know grasp the, this kind of a, a reality that of course has changed uh, to some extent in recent times at least as far as uh, the party that i am with uh, for us the the struggle the struggles of the dalit community is part and parcel of of our our daily practice so uh, when our party for instance when when we were in this must be the 70s when we were growing in bihar there is a part in bihar called bhojpur where the party really be, uh, revived itself uh, after a period of very serious police repression in the 60s and the late uh, 70s so at that time the initial struggles of the party of course you're working with dalits you landless completely subjugated by this the structure you know this this huge structure so the things that we really did at that time for instance was say the right to vote so something that you take so you know for granted that okay you're a citizen there's an election you go and you vote dalits were not even allowed to vote at that point in time so you if you and if you if at all the landlord in the village will tell you who to vote for so the that you know that autonomy of voting alongside that the question of social dignity 
So you have this thing where, um, of course, this is while we are fighting battles for land, while we are fighting battles for wages, where we are, you know, we are going, we are capturing government land, distributing government land among landless Dalits. We are doing all of that. But alongside that, we are also fighting this battle for social dignity. So there was this one particular practice that if a dominant caste person comes to your house, you cannot sit in on the cot in your house as well. You know, you have to stand up. In some villages, you couldn't wear chappal, you can't wear shoe and, you know, walk around. So assertions of all those kinds became part of our, our practice. So I think for our, for our party, we at least did not carry that, you know, that kind of the mistakes and the baggage that the, uh, that they left at least in the early part of the 20th century carried. Uh, now I'd just like to uh, talk to you about one uh, one of the most inspiring you know uh, struggles I've been a part of, uh, which is of the sanitation workers, and I've been hounding my friends over here that you know that I've come this far. I really need to meet sanitation workers. I have to see what the work is over here because I have to carry that message back. You know, it's it's very important for me. So, like I said, the work is hereditary. The work is you know it's caste described. So these kind of work, the so-called dirty work, is is, is obviously reserved for the Dalit community. So in, in uh, Bangalore, in Karnataka, from where I come, we've been organizing the sanitation workers now for close to maybe 15, 15 years. Uh, this, it's a workforce of almost uh, uh, maybe around 20,000 workers, of whom uh, 95 to 98% will belong to the Dalit community. So you don't have to go so far to understand, you know, how how entrenched this caste system is. And a lot of them are, you know, obviously women as well. So if you look at it, it's basically this this kind of this confluence of caste, class and caste and gender oppressions that, that come together over there. So when we began our work uh, uh, with, uh, with these workers, in the initial conversations itself, you know, you'd realize that the kind of practices are just so... It's so angering. So, you know, workers would say that you, like women, they wouldn't drink water. I used to be very curious. And I said, if you drink water, you need to go to the loo. Where is the loo? Mm. It's not like I can walk into somebody's house and say, you know, I want to use your loo. There's no way in the world they're going to let me. And even if I wanted water, I'd have to ask some household. And so apparently, you know, water used to be given in the bathroom jugs to the worker because you're dirty, you know, you're... So the caste system that was there in rural areas gets transplanted into an urban setting and it morphs itself. It creates new ways and new forms of oppression, untouchability and this kind of, you know, subjugation. So we actually, you know, in the beginning itself, when we started our work, we decided that the question really, of course, you know, if you look at the, uh, the class status of the workers, the wages were very low. It was, I think at that time, it was around 800 rupees. Oh, uh, Matt, oh. it's about $12, 12 yeah. a, month. a month. Yeah, that, um, that was the wages. There was no limit on your working hours. The working conditions were absolutely abysmal. You basically had to go from house to house, collecting garbage, cleaning the drains, cleaning, you know, these middle class people, they'll take the dogs onto the roads and they'll shit. You have to clean that. It's like absolutely inhuman, the kind of working conditions. But what we realized was that, you know, we sat together and, you know, they said, okay, we obviously have to fight for, our, our jobs were not permanent. It was on a temporary basis. So you want our jobs to become permanent. Uh, there was a contractor involved. We wanted the contractor removed. We wanted direct payment from the municipality. There was no working hours. We wanted fixed working hours. Uh, there was no drinking water, no toilets, no change rooms, nothing. So we wanted all of that. So. Alongside those economic demands, what we also said was we also want a dignified working condition. Now, the dignif how does one understand a dignified working condition in this situation? It's very difficult to... So, one of the things we did was we said that, see, really it's not about for us to snatch, for us to ask for anything. Some things will have to be snatched. So, there's this one practice that used to be there at that time. So, when the worker comes in the morning and she'd come, you know, maybe 5.30, 6 in the morning, and she'll have to work till 2 in the afternoon. So she'd come at 5.36. So these rich people in you know, their middle class houses, they'd call her and they'll give her the food from yesterday, the stale food to eat. Okay. And of course, they'll also give her water in a bathroom jug simultaneously. 
she obviously is not allowed into those none of these things are happening so what we began was to say that you know we started in this thing that we don't need this from anyone let us fight for what the state has to give us and let us tell those people that we don't want your stale food so this brilliant story where you know this uh, uh, one of our leaders she went and she was working and so this woman calls her and says you know come why don't you you know take this food and so in a plastic cover so giving food not in a plate in a plastic uh, cover you just throw the rice in put the dal into it and give it you know so the, uh, she got really angry and eh? very affronted so she asked that lady uh, madam who all live in your house so the lady says you know yeah my husband has passed away i have a son so she asked okay so where's your son my son's a software engineer so he's gone on night duty he's going to come back sometime now she gave the packet back and said keep it in the fridge when your son comes heat it up and give it to her to him we are now going, you know we are fighting we have a union we want better wages when we are on the streets you come and stand with us that's the support that we want from you now that one act just galvanized the entire workforce over there and suddenly it became this thing you know of course you know we have to take what's due from the state but we also have to take what's due from us mm-hmm. in in uh, in society so there's other thing you know where these middle class people will walk their dogs and you know you'll have to clean that the shit up the dog shit up so the one worker she refused she said i'm not here to do your work that work i am here to clean the street i'll sweep the street and i'm going to go you if you want your dog is dumping on the road you please clean it yourself turns out this woman was some oity toity you know uh, resident welfare association leader so she created a huge you know you and cry called up the elected representative in the area the uh, uh, then sent in the uh, the supervisory staff who came and you know, started shouting at this woman at this seriously a problem so so we get a call then from her and the unit over there saying that see this has happened we are pissed off and we are going to do something we knew exactly what we had to say you do what you want do whatever it is you want to do and then we'll see we'll deal with it so they the workers were so angry there are these small otters otter tippers that we call which were filled with garbage they took a tipper of garbage and dumped it in that woman's compound they did that so then they called up and said okay see we've done this but they filed an fir against us so the woman went and got a criminal case registered against the workers so then the entire union was mobilized went you know we got we filed a case against them as well and finally it became such a it came to such a turn that lady she called us up uh, through of course you know the mayor of the of bangalore city who is a very big elected representative saying that i want to settle this so we said okay we can settle it so we 8 o'clock in the evening we're all sitting in the mayor's office with the you know, this entire resident welfare association on one side and uh, we are on the other side and this woman then you know the worker says see i am willing to let this go let her apologize to me <laughs> <laughs> so she made that woman apologize to her in front of everyone <laughs> so you know what i'm trying to say is that see these these struggles right to over to when we talk about annihilation of caste which is really is a dream that you know any any sane person must have in the country and for us it's part of our our, our practice how do you actually start achieving it is a question you know that that always uh, remains so for us this kind of assertion you know this assertions against this kind of an oppressive hereditary rigidified kind of a system are absolutely essential in in practice otherwise it just becomes you know uh, things that you say but you know I, i'm just talking about things that we have done i i just want to talk about oh i still have time aram sir okay uh, so for us so this union then so starting from there i'm just talking about the, this must have been you know 12 12 years ago was when this particular incident happened so from there onwards we progressed to a point where now the workers you know the salaries that they get is around 18000 rupees it's still not very good but it's way better than uh, what it used to be we've gotten rid of the contractor in 2016 we had a massive strike massive strike the entire city every single worker stopped working every single worker for three days no garbage was picked up anywhere in the city and the city stank mm-hmm. and finally the 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 chief minister who is also now the chief minister he's come back to power he finally agreed okay 
we're going to do something about this and then the contractors were removed and the workers were brought under direct payment to the to the municipality which was really uh, hats off to the workers that's one of the big victories that they were able to to pull off so this kind of a you know of of a organizing this kind of a, of uh, of struggles it still continues now the the question is how does one where, where do you go from here right so we for especially for sanitation workers the point is that i don't you know for us it cannot be that there's an entire section of society that is born only to clean your garbage mm-hmm. that's really you know it's your garbage deal with it you know that's that's where one would come from you mechanize it you do what you want and the workforce that is there that's working there today our demand is that you regularize them and let them do some other work in the in the municipality it's always possible it cannot be that you know the that you 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 will claim to be a superpower you will go around the world saying you're a superpower and then you'll have an entire section of society just by virtue of their caste who's going to be cleaning your garbage day in and day out in every single town and city in the in the country so that's the kind of a, you know kind of a approach uh, uh, that we have taken on, on on this but having said that the the struggle against caste is really one of the most difficult uh, in that sense struggles it's it's something that's always you know reinventing itself uh, the if in if people thought you know with capitalism the caste will go you know modernity will come in and caste will go it's really not it's it also finds its way ways to you know to to reinvent itself over there so given this kind of a you know this kind of a vicious system the the question of even access to proper education proper living conditions these are all you know these are really very difficult kind of uh, realities uh, that the dalit community has to live with today and even if you were to make it so for instance uh, after because of the struggles of you know people like baba saheb ambedkar you have reservations you know affirmative action in jobs and education that take place that still doesn't mean to say that you're going to be treated well so dalit students who go on to say colleges private colleges will face discrimination over there as well the spate of suicides of you know of a number of dalit students across universities in india uh, you may not know but there's this uh, really incredible person called uh, rohit vemula a uh, dalit scholar who unfortunately you know no, no, it was institutional murder he, he took his life unable to you know deal with the kind of uh, you know the, the kind of uh, discrimination that uh, he was facing and it was not just about him he was talking about every single dalit student who's going through that entire thing so in colleges for instance you'll have a number of uh, instances where say if you by chance you get to a phd you're going to you can actually do a phd it's very difficult for you to get a proper guide because the guide is going to see like which caste you know uh, you are from and they prefer you know pushing their caste people if you're in some like in, i did engineering previously in my engineer when before i became a lawyer i still remember in my class you know, it's it's so obvious so the front benches are all the the fair looking you know obviously the brahmin students then there'd be you know some other students and they, behind would be all of us you know so i i didn't go in through a to a reservation quota but uh, my friends with those who came through the reservation quota so you you're always kept aside you're always you you're not going to be you won't mingle you'll not allow and the way teachers then you know your professors would deal with you you'll obviously see the differences over there as well so every step of the way it is you know difficulty and i know i'm not sure if you all have seen this but caste is such a it's 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 an export quality uh, character so it also gets exported so the you have students you have indians who, who, who go abroad they are carrying their caste in coming they are not going to you know leave their caste somewhere else or drop it into the ocean as they are coming here they will carry their caste here so which is why i think in in the us now and i think even in 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 australia as well i think the human rights commission has recognized that caste is a form of uh, racism in in australia and there's a very obvious reason to that because that is the practice that they are doing even over here in in america it's, it's become such a huge problem that you've had universities having to pass you know uh, kind of strictures trying to bring in caste even into the discrimination policies of their own uh, of their own colleges now the interesting part is this the fight back against that so you have the dom the upper caste diaspora who's fighting against that saying that no 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 you cannot you know have caste as a as a category and what they call that they're saying that this is hindu phobia 
you trying to bring in any kind of a restriction on caste is hindu phobia see it makes sense though because caste is hindu there is no like ambedkar said there, there is no hindu without a without the caste but the point is that you 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 you're carrying your caste with you you're carrying your discriminatory practices with you and if anybody wants to if there is you know a section of society that saying hey you don't bring it here at least you know at least here we're not going to tolerate it you're going to say that hey this is hindu phobia so the this this kind this kind of a you know insidious kind of practices is what is how you probably will will <clears throat> understand caste and it's in every single thing i mean if you look at jobs inevitably the jobs of cleaning etc will be done by dalits it's not just on the streets you go to an, you go to a factory uh, and in a factory you will have say various you know production that this and the other and you see where the major number of dalits would be they would be in the what's now called housekeeping so you, this you know, it's, it's just incredible yeah so i think in so far as at least uh, uh, india's concern and as far at least as far as we are concerned uh, caste is something that you know you cannot ignore caste is something that has to be fought and um, uh, you know ambedkar had this he's written this brilliant uh, book it was actually a speech which he never got allowed to uh, to deliver it's called annihilation of caste i, I really uh, you know recommend that you please read it so in that he, he gives a kind of a blueprint on you know his understanding of caste caste practices and also how you know how caste can be annihilated and ultimately what he says in that is of course you know inter dining and inter marriage which itself now seems you know sometimes it's it's, it's really not a reality but beyond that what you need is the foundation of caste is in the scriptures so unless you unless you deal with that there's no way you're going to be able to ever take caste out of indian society so i think this was of course written i think in 1936 now caste practices you know they've also evolved with with capitalism with uh, at least some amount uh, you know with some amount of changes so i think for all of us uh, the question really is what are the kind of you know what is the kind of program uh, that we can have which addresses this at every level so i'll stop here yeah, this i think did. i kind of covered as much as i could thank you thank you